Hi, it's Jackie. I'm here with big news. The Grown Ass Woman's Guide will be back in January with all new episodes. Until then, I'm sharing some best of episodes created just for you. Have a very happy, healthy holiday season, and I will talk with you in January. Jackie, it's so nice to be on the show, and thank you so much for, for <laughs> it, asking in. me to be on Grown Ass <laughs> Women's Guide. I love it. I love it. Please, I need the guide. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited to do this. You're a legend for grown ass women everywhere. So let's go back. I'm imagining my life in the early 90s when I first see you grace the magazines and TV and all of it. And it's like, finally, right? And at the same time, was it all rainbows and unicorns when you became... <laughs> Like, I can only imagine the feedback in the modeling industry. Can you speak to what it was like in the beginning? So going back into 89 and early 90s, it was waifdom. Every model that was on the covers of the magazine and working within the industry, they were young ladies that were either 5'10 or taller. Very mm -hmm. few, like Kate Moss, were 5'7", five, 5'8". But they were all size zero, double zero, or even sometimes a two. And so mm -hmm. I came onto the scene as a rower, an athlete, and um, not really particularly wanting to be in modeling. But my girlfriend's brother was dating a woman that was in the full figured modeling industry. And she was, she looked like me, like she was size 12 and healthy looking. And I said, well, how do I get to do that? And people have always said, why don't you get into modeling? I said, I'm not going to lose half my body weight. <laughs> so I left my reporting days and I came back to New York City and I walked into an agency. I got signed on. Now that was the easiest part. Um, when I went over to Ford Models and I started working with a lot of different people within the industry, a lot of photographers that were in the major fashion magazines, did not want to work with anyone that was not the ideal or the, the type of model that they were used to working with. They were scared mm. that their work would be affected. It wasn't a matter of making money. It was more about reputation. My body type was very proportionate and I had curves in the right places, but I was fit fit with curves. That's the only way athletic curvy is really what the term is today. And so I started working a lot. And one thing led to the other where I started booking big campaigns. And one of the very first campaigns that I had, the photographer was one of those really esteemed photographers. And I was so excited. And when he walked into the room uh, an hour and a half after hair and makeup was done and my curlers were in my hair, he looked at me and he said, I'm not going to shoot this fatty and turned around and walked out of the studio, slammed the door. I, we didn't have cell phones at the time. And I called my agency and I just said, listen, I've never been spoken to like this before. I don't think that I really need to be in this industry. You know, truly, it doesn't make any sense to me. I was told to stay. It was an advertising job. It was a big deal. And when he came back, the light had changed. The set had to be completely altered and he said, well, if I'm going to shoot you, I'm going to shoot you sexy. And it was like, ugh, icky. And he took my boat neck top and my shoulder fell loose. And it was like for the first jeans ad ever uh, with a full-figured model. When you're the world's first full-figured supermodel, who's also chosen as People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People, not once, but twice, you have earned the right to be known by a single name, Emmy. For three decades, Emmy has made it her personal mission to break down barriers and fight for inclusivity in the fashion and beauty industries. In her work as brand spokesperson, television personality, podcast host, author, the first full-figured Revlon spokeswoman, keynote speaker, coach, and clothing line creative director, just to name a few roles, Emmy's message remains clear. Self-esteem should not be decided by the number on the scale something women over 40, myself included, struggle with on a daily basis. I'm Jackie McDougall, and this is the Grown-Ass Woman's Guide. More and more women are joining book clubs these days as a way to share ideas and connect with other women. But what about a pod club? 
for women who love to discuss podcasts. Cool, right? Enter the Grown Ass Woman's Guide Pod Squad, a free monthly virtual event where we can chat about all things the Grown Ass Woman's Guide. Bring questions, comments, topic ideas, and strong opinions on recent episodes. Some months will include a special guest from the podcast. It's totally free to join. Visit grownasswoman.guide forward slash episode 160 to RSVP. Space is limited. Be a part of the pod squad. I would love to see you there. As Emmy shared, when she began her modeling career over 30 years ago, she faced judgment, criticism, and body shaming. But it wasn't long before those who shunned her began to change their tune. Let's take a break for like two years. And then People Magazine came onto the scene with 50 of the Most Beautiful People. And I mean, People Magazine doing a double page spread in the nude. It was beautiful. But little did I know that this particular photograph would shoot me all around the world. I met this photographer two years later when I was modeling in Miami and there was a, a phone call at the luncheonette where everybody was getting their coffees, their egg sandwiches and my crew left her later. And I took the phone and I said, Oh, let me, who, who do, would you like to speak to? It was this photographer. I'm mm-hmm. like, of all people, I would have to get this phone call. <laughs> when I walked outside, this man looked cleaned up. He didn't look like he rolled out of bed or had had a very long weekend. Um, He looked handsome. There were two models with him. And I didn't exactly know what to say. And he beat me to it. He goes, Emmy, right? And I go, yes. And he said, we've got to work together. You're all over. This is wonderful. Such fantastic new things. And, And I'm thinking to my head going, is this truly a real thing happening here? Is he faking it or what? So I gave him the phone and I said, I want to let you know we have actually worked together. I want to thank you. You really solidified my place in what I was doing. And here's your phone and wishing you a good day. And I don't remember walking away, but it taught me that people who are not self-assured with either their own bodies or their own ideas of what is healthy and well, or the value of a human being, they're going to project and reflect those negative Mm -hmm. feelings and quite frankly, touch the line of being a bully And oftentimes for young kids, I share this when I talk to younger groups uh, and I say, what you have to do is not take this personally. It's very hard as a young person not to take these words to heart, Mm -hmm. but anybody that's going to put you down because of the way you look like has nothing to do with you. So it was a very early on experience. It wasn't all, you know, yippee kaye, this is great. But I had so many wonderful, wonderful experiences having my commercial run at the Academy Awards for Revlon, being a Revlon mm. girl, you know, traveling around the world and, and opening markets and opening minds and hearts. Um, mm. That beauty is not just one particular way. It's an array of beauty. It's a bouquet of beauty. Right. And did you know back then while you were going through this in those first years, you would make such a lasting impact on a generation, multiple generations. No, absolutely not. I I just couldn't, because my background was in reporting and I Mm -hmm. was working for an NBC affiliate in Arizona. Um, I was a page in NBC in LA and I had all the (laughs) gumption coming from Syracuse, Newhouse and VPA that I was going to be in TV and that curiosity when I fell into the industry and I started having success in booking multiple bookings over and over, it, it it was all perfectly aligned. Little did I know back then Mm. the kind of career that I had. Now I could have given up because of that photographer. I was very, very close to just walking away and saying, how dare you? The ego was just a little bit irritated. And, and if I had let that happen, I wouldn't have had, this magnificent, rewarding career, being an advocate, being a disruptor, and Mm -hmm. just asking the question, why? Why is this so? Why not feel good? Why do we have to feel poorly all the time? There's no reason for it. Right. What did that feel like? I mean, you were pretty young still. What did it feel like having women all over the world feel represented, frankly? 
I didn't understand the impact at first. And when I would travel on a train from Milan to Venice with my daughter and I'm looking for a seat on the train and saying, excuse me, is this taken? And a woman from Germany went like this and I thought she was having a heart attack. And I almost went into CPR with this poor woman. And my little, my daughter was sitting there and she goes, no, 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 please sit. Are you Emmy? And I'm thinking, how, how crazy is this that you're in another part of the world, different places, and that happened. There's no doubt about it. Emmy was making an impact worldwide. But it was even then that she knew if we're going to create a ripple effect of positive change, we would need to empower one another to stand up and be heard. One voice is powerful. Many voices together, that's a movement. It, I always had the conversation, I said, my, my dear friends, it's teamwork. What you yeah. hear, if it touched you, don't let it just end there. Figure out mm-hmm. your own way of using your voice. I have a chat called, um, in my coaching program, a power of the purse. And the power mm. of the purse is the most important thing that we can have as women. If we don't like what, how our personal care products don't honor our bodies, then the power of the purse is going to take us elsewhere where there's no bleach in our products and there's no this, that, and the other thing that, that could be harmful to our bodies. And you better bet companies are noticing when there's a shift mm-hmm. in income and there's a shift. And if you are going to write a letter, start with a compliment and end with the room for improvement and don't stop Mm. writing your letters. They still really, it's really important. So I see it as like, I might, you know, wipe away some of the cobwebs and some of the the weight on the shoulders and then be like, okay, it's not just, you know, just a few people doing this. Once you hear your truth being spoken, if it speaks truth to you, you can't sit there going, no, 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 no. I didn't hear that. Right. (laughs) It's so true. It's the it's it's a group effort. So this beautiful three decades of seeing change and enlightenment and then it going down and then getting stronger, that next mm-hmm. push and then going down. And then it's not stopping. This is yeah. an it's a beautiful unfolding. And I love the younger generation coming in and going, Well, what are you all complaining about? Of course all bodies are great. It's like, yeah, 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 there we are. That and I good. love that you are meeting them where they are when they're young, you know, bring them along into adulthood and helping them understand that their body is their body, right? That, that, oh. that, but, but how do we go back to the grown ass woman? How do we go back to a woman yeah. like myself, 51, other women, everyone who listens, most everyone is over 40 anyway. Yeah. We've been raised during that waif time. We've seen how things have changed in the modeling industry and the representation. And at the same time, there's still a lot of pressure and a lot that has been programmed in us. And so did you struggle during those times? Like, Well, it's, I think we all, we all live in our, our, the same society and we still have a projected, um, $377 billion worldwide that the diet related industry is going to be making on a 98 percentage failure rate. So when you think about 98 percentage failure, 98 percent failure rate, all diets fail. The, 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 the conventional diets that, you know, eat yeah. this, eat that, do this, do that. We really, when we start looking at that, onslaught of let's just say a billion is just taken off the top to just throw into marketing to offset that pressure that we get through content in movies, content on online content on social content on billboards, right? Those messages, we have to become our own media watchdog. And I use this phrase very, very generally when I work with the national eating disorders association, almost 30 years as an ambassador, I've learned through their work and their research that we can turn the tides. We can not fall in and absorb these messages that they should be our own. We can see messages and say, why is that? Do I have to be that way? You can question it. You can turn it off. Mm. You can limit the exposure. And 
who you hang with, especially as adult women, we need our girlfriends. I don't care how old you are until we're like 90, we need our girlfriends at least, right? Well, are the girlfriends empowering one another? Are they tearing mm-hmm. other people apart? And when you talk to the younger 12 years old, 11 years old, 9, 10, you want to show them that your girlfriends are the ones that see the brighter side. And yes, you're there for them when things are really falling apart with the wine and, and with evenings where you're like, oh, mom's with her friends. We need to talk about stuff. But <laughs> how we choose to live our life is up to us. No one is making any of these choices and decisions. We have to choose. Do we want to live on the positive side of the coin? Or do we want to be on that negative side where a lot of people are? A majority of people find solace and kinship with others Mm -hmm. when you complain about things. But what it does is it really affects your attraction of good things. It almost repels things away from you. Business Mm -hmm. opportunities, job opportunities, relationships. And it's not to be fake, but it's really get to the place of like, wait a minute, why am I talking about all these other people? What is it in me that I feel deficient in? Why is that Mm. happening here? Emmy says one of those choices we face is the one many of us struggle with, putting ourselves first, making ourselves and our needs a priority. It may feel selfish, but it's actually self-preservation. I never understood this as a kid. Why wouldn't my mom put the mask on me first? Right. Well, when you realize in any kind of change to take place, we have to, in order to give real, true, yummy, delicious love to someone else. I mean, we're talking all in. You better be giving it to yourself because you're constantly going to be waiting for that other person to be hitting the bar here. Oh, you're not doing it enough. You got to go up higher for me. And that ruins things. So yeah, it it's the work on inside and it takes practice. It takes failing. And it takes looking at failure as just opportunities to learn. And there's no perfection mm. here. None. It's just keep on going. And, and you know, wake up and ble- I bless my body. I bless all the cells in my body saying, thank you for this next day. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to go hiking and walking and starting my day and being with people that I like and doing the work that I love. It nice. takes more, it takes practice. It takes yes. feeling really pretty horrible about life and feeling down low, so low that you're like, okay, I'm done with this. This does not work. Yeah. <laughs> there has to be a better way. A better way includes honoring and accepting ourselves, no matter what the number on the scale says or the number of wrinkles on our faces. And I see that with women in aging as well. So whether, you know, I, I grew up always feeling like I was fat. Um, I'm sorry. Which, you know, I have, I'm one of 13 kids and I have oh five sisters, f- four of them older. And so my first quote unquote diet was I was nine years old mm. because I was watching my sister. And by the time I was in my 20s, I had an eating disorder and, you know, I... I have played these tapes over and over in my brain my whole life. And I think many women relate to that. Mm. But just as many women are like, yeah, I never really had a weight problem, but now they see their bodies changing with age. And Mm. now they're starting to get super critical. Can you imagine an animal going like, oh, well, I'm going through the aging process and then (laughs) self-hating because they're going through a natural process. Do you see that a lot? When you talk with women, whether it's a size thing, do you see when it comes to aging, this sort of self-loathing that occurs? Well, it's a crazy situation. Yes. I mean, there's not a lot of societal uplift for anyone that's above 25 years old or 30 years old. Mm. And unfortunately, that's their loss. I always think, you know, that that's a loss in our society that we don't honor the graceful aging of all men and women, more so women. And then then it's our responsibility to come together and be able to share our feelings and our thoughts and find opportunities to to actually come together and make something happen. Mm -hmm. It's slow in process. When I take a look at myself, for example, I'll use myself. 
my body is very different than what it was when it was in the 20s. Mm-hmm. I've given birth to a child. I've I, when I gave when I was I was pregnant. I was really <laughs> like pregnant. And I thought, my God, this is quite amazing that another body is growing inside of me. It taught me a lot about not beating myself up for the little things or, you know, how could I do that? And I also, I also started thinking as I'm aging, my heart ticks, no matter how much I put it down, my cells Mm -hmm. emit toxins and they do. So the more appreciation that I have, and yes, I have a little bit of more wrinkles and I have a sag here, or I don't have the kind of firm legs because I'm not an Olympic trained or national team (laughs) trained athlete. Do I want to be that? No, I don't. I want to be able to just appreciate what I have. And if anybody has anything to say about it, really, truly, it's not my issue. If I take control of drinking enough water, um, eating really good, yummy, delicious foods. And when I do have a Sunday or I do have cookies to eat them with vim and vigor, to not feel guilty about it. It's true. Right. I don't want to die and, and be like, I should have had the cookie, <laughs> you know, and I want to break bread. I want to have dinner parties with people yeah. who feel more about the conversation than the fear of the calories going into their mouths. It does change, but If we're going to lean on our society to lift us up once again, Jackie, we're going to be shortchanged. And I just want to feel free. I want to be uplifted. And if I have to do that heavy lifting or do it and get into a regular practice, well, then that's what I'm going to do. And diverting my my funding of this, that, and the other thing in areas that lift me up, that make me feel good. The whole point is to feel good. Mm-hmm. And if A, B, C doesn't work, then then there has to be other ways to feel good. It takes work. That's all it is. It's being mindful of what you're absorbing in all ways. Yeah. yeah. I think anything worth doing, like being a grown-ass woman, is a practice. Oh, You know, yes. there's no destination. And so um, same with, I mean, we can't go back and reprogram necessarily what we've been through, all the messages that we've gotten, whether it's from family or the media, but we can take responsibility for ourselves today. Hey, and everything, every single thing, the good, the bad, and the ugly got us to where we are today. And we have to be proud right. that we are here. And especially after the two years that we've just gone through, that right. we're here and we have a purpose and we're living out the purpose. And if we live in the past and try and figure out why, that might take some time. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, you're here now. Um, where do you want to go? Where's your vision? Right. What's going to make you feel yeah. good in your work? What kind of work do you want to do? Really? Like, do you really need, you know, multiple jobs and working yourself to the bone? Do you really need to do that? It's it's a shift when you're a grown ass woman. I love the name of your show. It's, it's <laughs> wisdom. You. Allow the wisdom to come. And to speak to you, I meditation is mm. a gateway for peace and calm. And when I feel like that feeling of either frustration or, or anger or something, I either try and lay down for half an hour so they can shut, just be, have a reboot, or I get mm-hmm. into meditation or I scream and shout and go, gosh, I know better. Insight Timer is an app that I use. Do you oh, know yeah. Insight Timer? I do. Yeah. That's a good one. And David G, I'm in love with him. Oh my, God, oh my gosh, him. totally. Are you too? Oh, <laughs> I have heard, you know, I haven't used Insight Timer in a while, but David G's voice. Oh my gosh. There's one other guy over there too that I really like. I'll have to link to that in the show notes. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm I'm with you as far as let I need a, a leader of my meditation. You know, I, I'm not necessarily going to sit there quietly and meditate on my own. So I like meditations that kind of tell me what to do and, and lead me there mm. so that I can get out of my own head. So it's a, it's a great app. It's not a secret that meditation and movement are both proven to increase our well-being while decreasing stress and other negative emotions, often leading to more confidence and a positive self-esteem. Keeping in line of self-esteem and what I wanted to make sure that we talked about is the joy of movement 
is mm. something that has been possibly mistreated. The joy of movement has been replaced with calories and, and shape and all that stuff. And I, I, I'm claiming 2022 as the year of the body. And mm. I have a group coaching practice, I have a VIP coaching practice. And I, throughout this last 2021 and now, I'm like, I'm claiming 2022 as the year of the body where we just fill it with joy. Yeah. I mean, forget about the calorie burn. Forget about the incessant weighing. I'm all into health. I'm really into health. I'm into joy. I'm not into doing my hiking and my swimming or whatever I do, snowshoeing like a crazy person when I can get snow when there's good snow. <laughs> Um, I do it because it allows me to play. And I have a hashtag called mm. play, sweat, win. When you play, you're probably going to sweat a bit. And then guess what? You win. Whether, whatever yes. that winning is. And if you're consistent with it, you have hormone releases. You have beautiful serotonin mm. coming to the surface that, that helps with self-esteem. It helps with your body image. Because if you're doing your practice, this is a great thing everyone to hear when you're practicing kindness to yourself and you're treating yourself from the shoulders up you're not treating yourself from the shoulders down if you're treating mm. yourself from the shoulders up you'll always know when someone's not treating you right whether you're dating whether you're with in a relationship or whether you're in work when people are treating each other from the, the shoulders up you know that's someone who I want to hang with a lot of that feeling of self-esteem comes from Drinking your water, getting your mm -hmm. sleep. Sleep is a mm -hmm. real undervalued thing. It is so important to turn off your devices and put them in another room and get your exercise on. Get into it. And if you have to do it early in the morning, get it in. Clock it yeah. in. You don't have to get methodical, but just get in there and do it. Once yeah. you start putting that into a system of yours, anything that comes at you, in a negative way, you're like, see ya. I'm just, I'm not interested. I'm doing what I'm doing. I am right. the best that I can be right this second. Nothing you have to say. If you're going to make fun of my body, that's on you, buddy, or gal friend or whatever. Right. You know, seriously, <laughs> um, when we practice those things and we have accountability mm -hmm. buddies, you have accountable people with you, you have different walking partners, yep. Set it all up. Set yourself up for success. And um, yes. it's really helpful. So helpful. And all it is is yeah. beginning and one day. One day. Begin. Start. Such a great point because I think we all try to plan it out, right? So it's like, oh, I'm going to start walking five miles a day. And now I'm going to pull out my April calendar and I'm going to map it on there and blah, blah, blah. And it just becomes this convoluted, overwhelming Arduous. thing. Put on Ugh. your shoes and walk. Just put on your shoes. <laughs> Just if it's on. raining, bring an umbrella. I mean, I've had to talk to a couple of my girlfriends like, you're going to go out in the rainstorm. I go, um, <laughs> if it's really cold and rainy, I'll save us. But if it's kind of warm yeah. and it's raining, hmm, what's wrong with that? You know, we're right. getting it in. Yeah. When you see the sun rises, when you see the sun sets, mm. and I try and get my walking in between those times or at those times, you're you're a part of something much bigger mm. and it's much more than just a calorie burn or logging in the miles. We always like looking at our apps and going, is it 3.6 or is it 3.2? <laughs> you know, you have shorter <laughs> legs than me. Okay, fine. You know? <laughs> so it's yes, And I fun. love that you call it the joy of movement. Yeah, yeah, the joy of movement. And and I did an episode recently because number one, I don't do weight loss on this podcast. I have done weight loss in the past, but to me is not helpful. I, I don't want to have those conversations. I love these conversations about feeling our best in our own bodies, no matter what size they are. That's right. If you want your body to be more fit or smaller or whatever, like more power to you, great, go for it. But I'm, I'm not going to be the leader of that self-loathing no, no. movement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but as far as movement goes, it's so important for our minds, for our bodies, for everything like our bodies are meant to move oh and it yeah. doesn't mean you have to go and do crossfit and and lift you know 
five thousand pounds or like a crazy I, Spartan in- person, like <laughs> oh my god, I lost my mind. I had so much fun, but I was like, I'm flinging myself over walls. Yeah. Like I stopped that, my, but <laughs> my goal was to do that in 2020, and then they were closed down, and I was like, oh, I guess that that's passed. <laughs> <laughs> but it, and I appreciate those who like to push themselves in that way. Yeah. But I did an episode recently that one woman talked about she juggles. She enjoys juggling and she's got like these great upper body muscles from juggling and another woman who does belly dancing. Ooh. And and I love that people are choosing, especially grown ass women, are choosing activities that bring them joy. Movement movement is really the key to burning off stress, to feeling good. And even when you're feeling low, you have no energy and you're like, I Mm -hmm. can't get out the door, get your butt in your shoes (laughs) and go. Because after about a half a mile, you're going to find that it built and created more energy within you. And I always say, if you, if you have a dog, you would never keep your dog inside for a week or two weeks or a month. You would never do that. In fact, you know, you might be called up by, you know, the dog protective services. <laughs> but so we have to look at ourselves as a human being with a physical body needing the blood to not get thick. We need to move it. Mm-hmm. And if it's dancing, go and be your bad self. Yeah. If it's snowshoeing or doing whatever it's going to be, but getting yourself moving helps everything. It helps everything. Yeah. Yeah. And they happen to have fitness involved with them. It's not, you know, the days of like going to step aerobics, (laughs) but we would beat the crap out of ourselves, right? Trying to look a certain way. And now it's all about, I'm 51. I appreciate this body. I want to move it. I want to honor it by... I'm 58. So even- I want to move it. I, I, I mean, I want to. I want to be like kicked out of this life. I want to be like, you know, you last breath, boom, evicted. <laughs> I I can't wait to they kite flick surf. the lights. One, yeah, flick the lights. Let's go. And you know, I'm ready for my next journey. Let's go. Um, last call, Emmy. Last, hmm. um, I can't Not wait now. to kite I mean, surf. When it, when no, no, no. When, no. It when it's time. When, when it's time. I, you know, I'm. I, listen, I'm ready. To, I'm wringing out every bit that I can. Everything, and I. I'm just so grateful. I'm just so grateful to have been and do the things that I get to do. And one of the many things Emmy gets to do is create new organizations that make a huge impact. I just founded the True Beauty Foundation. It's um, a youth initiative to help with mental wellness and Mm. everything having to do, that's just what it is. And so I'm going to be talking to children and young people and college age, as well as the medical community, educational community, and You have to have a full court press hitting all different points to help the kids feel good in their skin. Because when they go home, you don't want them to um, be faced with ridicule or whatever it might be because they're saying, I'm empowered and this is great. When a parent was brought up in the 50s or the 60s or the 70s and having this mentality of like, you've got to be only one way to have a job and find a man. It's like, that's all gone now. So Mm. I'm psyched to have it in a, I've been doing this for 30 years and I finally made it official. So I'm very happy. Um, Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm just delighted. How do we grown ass women empower the young people in our lives and not pass on the programming we were taught instead find ways to support them in being their most mentally healthy versions of themselves. The person who's listening right now, maybe they have a daughter, maybe they have sons, maybe they don't have kids, but like, how do we twofold? Number one, help ourselves to start stripping away those messages that our self-esteem is tied to a number on a scale for our own benefits, therefore creating better self-esteem in the girls who come behind us. Good question. So we got to take a look at our Brene Brown list of values and you can Mm. just go online and check that out. Um, Figure out what your value, what is your word that is a key to your life? 
um, and then be able to build the way that you see others, uh, especially a child, especially if you have a girl or a boy. I mean, there's, the boys don't get enough research and hopefully in time, we're going to have much more about boys and self-esteem and body image and stuff. Cause that is what girls are going through. Boys are really, really have been going through for a long time. But if you have a girl in the house and a boy yeah. in the house, you know, around dinner time, when somebody's hungry, allow them to eat when they're not hungry, allow them not finish the plate. Um, and also saying, are you going to have this when they go out to dinner and question portions and sizing and all that. So if you're doing that to yourself, or if you're sneaking mm. food in another room and you're not allowing the rest of the family to have dessert or whatever it might be, there has to be a balance. And if there's such a focus on food around the dinner table and there's strife and you can feel it in your stomach, serve the food and then talk about, I'm really proud of the way that you were compassionate with your girlfriend when I heard you and I picked you up from school. Tell me more about where you're learning that from. This is really great. Or I really appreciated your helping me without even me asking you. Work on the value, the mm. real true value of a human being, your generosity, your, your thoughtfulness, your uniqueness, your characteristics that make you genuinely you, and talk about those things and be there during those kinds of conversations to bat home that that's what value is. Because you cannot, as we spoke about in the very, very beginning, Jackie, our bodies change, become a little fuller during our, our, our periods, and then trim down a little bit because of the water retention. At different times when we're taking medication, at different times if we're going through chemo, if we're going through illness, we're going through whether we shrink down or go up. If we can see our bodies as our best friends instead of our worst enemies, our life will change. Starting each day with a body blessing that you are actually taking care of my journey as a human being. I am a spiritual being having a human existence. It's not the other mm -hmm. way around. Like we're human beings and we're just searching for spirituality. We're, we're actually, in, our bodies are encasing the soul. So when we are in such a conflict, imagine what isn't coming to us. But if we become connected and aligned, truly in partnership with this incredible vehicle, I got goosebumps all over my body saying this, imagine mm. what we could do as a, a people with yeah. each other, no matter what color we may be, no matter what gender we may be, or fluidity, or age how if we're all in alignment and feeling good with the skin that we're in, my gosh, I think that that's just, that changes the, the whole conversation on what we're going to consume, what we're going to purchase and how we're going to live. Right. That's so beautiful. And you're absolutely right. When it comes to consumption, we're talking about food consumption, you know, messaging we, we, consumption. We, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, social media consumption, you know, all of this, um, we're judging ourselves, our real lives against what somebody has chosen to put out there on Instagram. Because they're going to be making money. Mm. So, so majority of people that put out messaging, most of the time, it's about this is the solution to your problems. Buy this, yeah. and this is going to solve your problems. A few months later... Now buy this. This is a new thing. Right. Buy this because they're not going to say that thing didn't work. So mm. when you just become aware of what it is that you're you're putting yourself in front of, and and if you're watching a lot of TV, a lot of commercials. If you're going into social and you're not having limitations on that, please, it's like a herd of horses to try and <laughs> tear you away from a rabbit hole. We all know that. Yeah. But it's training yourself on. How do I feel when I'm with this person? How do mm -hmm. I feel when I'm in this situation? How do I feel when I'm eating this food? Now, I tested negative for any allergies with gluten and dairy. Negative. Mm -hmm. I don't feel really good when I eat gluten and, and a lot of dairy. There's like, I can yeah. have sheep's milk or something. But man, you do not want to be around me when I'm having certain <laughs> dairy and gluten. So even though the, the tests aren't there, I know 
how it makes me feel. And I'd Mm -hmm. rather not feel horrible like that. Right. You know what? Go with how you feel. So that's the best barometer. Yeah. Yeah. I have a coach on regularly. Her name's Courtney Townley and she used to be in all the fitness and stuff. And now she's all about up here, right? When it comes to health, she knows that mindset. But one of the things she says that I bring into my life daily is it's not what you're doing, it's why you're doing it. Amen, sister. Right? So are you eating the cheesecake hidden in a closet because you feel shame or are you just enjoying yourself because you want to have a slice of cake? You I've know? had people at a restaurant lean in when I'm on a date or I'm mm-hmm. seriously and go, <laughs> I wish I could eat like you oh. because I just taste everything. I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. This is so delicious. And, but I <laughs> acknowledge how good when it's a really good meal or I enjoy mm-hmm. my dessert. If I'm hat choosing to have dessert that night, it's such an oddity that there is joy around the act of appreciation of food. Um, mm. Man, I wish I could eat like that. Man, I could, I wish that I could, you know, I was eating an apple one time on the bus and it was so succulent. It was so good. And I was eating it with such appreciation. I remember it. And the man next to me said, God, I like the way you're eating your apple. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's too funny. And it was not, you know, He's it was an older guy. About it Emmy was, eating an apple. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm appreciating it. I'm appreciating it. So I think it's slowing it all down, not Mm. living for others. And this is being selfish, really. It's it's putting your mask on first, and then you will be able to give in the way that you would like to give. But if we grown-ass women put ourselves still at the bottom of the Mm -hmm. barrel, we're going to be depleted. We're not going to have any energy for anything else for us and our girlfriends we're going to probably be depressed. We'll feel underappreciated. And that's, it's time to stop that. I'm giving you permission. It's time to put ourselves at the top of the heap. Our children will appreciate it. They'll get used to it. They'll be getting used to you giving them, you know, assignments, who's going to set the table, who's going to clear, who's going to help giving assignments on taking the garbage out, helping with the yard, really, Kids really, really are looking for those types of things to contribute to the home so that Mm -hmm. they understand that they're part of this unit. So not everything is being done for them. Could I have you talk to my three teenage boys about that? (laughs) So fun. So fun because they, they will do it if... So how old are they again? Oh, 15, 16, 17. They're helpful, some more than others, but I have found ways. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure <just> you have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, you know, Boston girl. I, I, I've got my ways. Love, um, love. But I used to get so frustrated. And you're right, though, when we feel like we're contributing to something bigger than ourselves and greater than ourselves. And there's it's, rewards. It's impactful. There's truly saying thank you to them, but also saying, I'm sure you have your own tricks. But yeah, <laughs> it's expected. Expect them to step up, expect them to fail at whatever, if they're nervous about whatever it might be. But you're absolutely right in that failure, not only allowing young people to fail and to show up in a way that the world is going to require them to show up, but also being honest about our own struggles at times so they can see what resilience looks like, right? And perseverance. And I'm sure your daughter has seen a lot of that in your, I mean, you've pivoted, you're like the definition of pivot. You've pivoted so many times in your career yes. and done so many beautiful things Thank you. that in a generation where we're taught to like choose a thing and do it for the rest of your life. Remember when we we're growing up and it was like, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? Right. Now we live in a time where you can choose to do something for the next six months or That's five right. years. That's right. You don't have to choose something for the rest of your life. So how do you see the next phase for you going? I mean, you're doing the coaching. You've got this new program. Mm -hmm. So what should we be expecting to see from Emmy? Well, I'm not going to be going away anytime soon about um, diversity in fashion and inclusivity in the sizing of fashion. But, uh, you know, 
just the celebration of the of our uniqueness. It's I'm going to mm. carry on. Um, I believe that this is my chapter. This is the the last chapter, and to keep it vibrant and healthy and fun. And I want to bring joy back into um, movement and not not be seen as a calorie burner. Um, and also to get people away from devices so that they can, you know, I'm going to be tying in the national park systems with the movement part of Place Wet nice. Win. And the educational part will be with the Fashion Without Limits with inclusivity in fashion and uh, talk more about meditation going in, like not being afraid of being quiet. I think there's a bit mm. of fear of like, oh, what am I going to find out? It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> You, you, you're not, and, and we're not separated from the, the ultimate source of who we are. It's always been there. It's just that we want to be aware. Yes, get silent, get quiet, and allow peace. We have to create our own silence sometimes. Everything is so busy. We're running, we're workaholic, this, that, and the other thing. And when I got yes. cancer, I will never forget. Someone was saying, you got to meditate. I was like, why? I'm good. You know, no, it's going to really calm you down. But I've like, got things to do. Let's go. Like, no, 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 no. This cancer thing is like, calm you down. They gave me a piece of paper that said, shut up and meditate. And I kept mm-hmm. on looking at this thing and looking at it and going. Ah, 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 ah. And I finally was like, okay. And I felt like I was a little kid. I stomped myself on the ground and I sat there. I was like, God, this is so boring. And then I committed to doing it 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And finally, one day, I got what they were saying. And then I mm. liked it enough that I did it again and did it again. And it seems like that's my natural set point to start my day. And then mm. things, when I don't, I feel like I have like a, where's my leg? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> right. And so this little tool um, helps me and the physicality helps me and eating well and hanging with good people. Mm. Hang on. And I think it's so important. You know, I love the balance that you speak of quiet, just being alone, being, being with your breath. Also use your voice in such an impactful way to make constant change in how we look at things. Mm. And so it may have been in 89 in the nineties showing up, but now as you've hit your fifties and your, in, in your stride, being able to use your voice the way you do to allow others to feel less alone, to allow others to feel maybe they have a message inside them. Yep. That's right. We all do. And that's really empowering. Mm-hmm. So please keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. To learn more about Emmy's coaching programs and all of the important work she continues to do, visit grownasswoman.guide slash episode 160. Thank you so much for listening. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Please share this episode or any Grown Ass Woman's Guide episode with a friend. And if you feel inspired, leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast app. It's my personal mission to support as many women as possible in becoming their most badass grown ass selves. Until next time, you are a grown-ass woman. Act accordingly. Spring has sprung, and with the change of seasons, sometimes comes an increase in vitality. If you're feeling in the mood for a little more personal time, may I suggest Coconut. Coconut is all about providing clean and natural ingredients when you're enjoying your most intimate moments, with or without a partner. Naturally safe products developed by people who are obsessed with quality. Get 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash coconut. That's 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash coconut.